Dennis Gates has found his transfer portal big man, and Missouri has found its new baseball coach too. So let's talk about all that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And we're going to start today on the basketball court. Because Missouri and Dennis Gates finally found their transfer portal big man, and it's a name a lot of Tiger fans are already familiar with, Connor Vanover. Yes, Connor played for the Arkansas Razorbacks a couple seasons ago and the season before that as well. Spent this most recent season, though, however, with Oral Roberts. And I think a lot of Missouri fans' opinions on Connor are going to be colored somewhat by a bad game he had against Jeremiah Tillman in Missouri a couple years ago. Vanover was had a terrible game from the field. Tillman just completely physically outmatched him. And, well, after that point, it seemed like he sort of fell out of favor with Arkansas a little bit. His last year with Arkansas, by far his lowest amount of minutes and production for the Razorbacks. So, a move to Oral Roberts was in the cards. And frankly, last year, I think Connor Vanover had his best season of college basketball yet. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Connor Vanover, well, he's a very extremely tall young man. In fact, if he's listed as he's listed, depending on where you look, he's either seven foot three or, or seven foot five even. And if he was just seven foot three, just right, that's funny. Well, then he would be Missouri's tallest player of all time, tying Jordan Wilmore. But I think, by the way, a completely different body and a completely different game style than Jordan Wilmore, by the way. Vanover offensively actually took more three pointers last season than Kobe Brown for Oral Roberts, just to give you an idea of his jump shooting capabilities. Now, he wasn't nearly as accurate of a shooter as Brown was. In fact, maybe a little bit below average at about 32%. That's about right for his entire career. But just his willingness as a shooter, and honestly, if you look at all the guys on Missouri's roster last season, just about everyone at least shot as well as they typically have in the past, and in many cases, including the aforementioned Kobe Brown, Demoy Hodge as well on a tremendous amount of attempts well, I think maybe Connor Vanover from Missouri can maybe even knock down a better percentage of those three-pointers. But obviously what Missouri really wants Connor Vanover for is his defensive presence and rebounding. The Tigers on next season's roster, before adding Vanover, obviously we're looking to add a big guy. We all know Caden Shedrick. The Tigers came up a little short there in the pursuit of the former Virginia player. He ends up landing with the Texas Longhorns. So if you're saying, hey, I wish we would have had Caden Shedrick than Connor Vanover, well, hey, I'm right there with you. And I think it's obvious by the timeline of how all this played out, it's incredibly obvious that Dennis Gates feels the same way. But at this point in the process, after having come up in second place maybe two or three times with maybe a, another preferred big man, I actually think Vanover at this point in the process is a pretty good get for Missouri, because again, he fits what the Tigers need defensively and offensively. While he may not exactly be anything to write home about, I think he fits what Dennis Gates and the Tigers are, for the most part, trying to do. He came out and said he wants everybody on the court to be able to shoot a three point shot. That made me think that, well, maybe Jamarian Sharp, the former Western Kentucky product who is Ultimately, if he plays college basketball this season, going to end up with Chris Beard and the Ole Miss Rebels. Statistically, as others have pointed out out there on the Mizzou beat, that really statistically sharp 
and Connor Vanover weren't all that different. So if you were the type of person who is really excited about Jamarian Sharp, well, you should be relatively pleased that Missouri is getting a decent backup plan here in Connor Vanover, in my opinion. And just for the record, if you aren't an everyday listener of this podcast, well, I really wasn't as disappointed when Missouri missed out on Jamarian Sharp seemingly for a second time. I don't know how much they were really pursuing him that second time. That's sort of up for debate. But ultimately, I just think that Sharp didn't really fit what Missouri was trying to do offensively, despite the fact that obviously defensively he can be a real anchor for that side of the basketball. But bottom line, end of the day, I think Missouri did pretty well here. And for whatever Connor Vanover's his his deficiencies are, whatever his downsides are, I think for the most part, they can be masked by this Missouri roster. I think when there are certain matchups where Vanover is a bad matchup defensively, he's going to have to be playing on the perimeter more. Well, then you simply downsize and maybe play Jordan Butler and Aiden Shaw more as your de facto five man or even Noah Carter, that type of deal. Then there's night to night, there's going to be certain matchups where Missouri's just going to play with their small guys and Vanover's not going to really see the floor all that much. And that's okay because there's going to be other matchups where Vanover is really needed and it's going to be obvious. And before we get to Carrick Johnson, the newest Missouri head baseball coach, I did start thinking about something because the dynamics of the SEC are certainly a lot different than the Big 12 and one very important area, and that is Obviously, both conferences, football is number one, but the number two sport, I would say, at every Big 12 institution, at least in the old Big 12, right, was basketball, was men's basketball specifically. But in the SEC, that's actually not the case. You can actually make an obvious case that baseball is the number two sport in maybe half the league. And really, other than Missouri, certainly, Obviously, Kentucky basketball is maybe even the number one sport at Kentucky. I would say Arkansas, certainly basketball, a huge deal at Arkansas, too. The Bud Walton Stadium and the massive scale of that place is a great indication there. Really, other than those three, and to a somewhat lesser extent, I would say the Tennessee Volunteers, they play in a massive arena as well. And I say to somewhat of a lesser extent because, well, a lot of the reason for that huge arena is the women's basketball side for Tennessee. So obviously the Vols have been great at basketball the last few years and pretty pretty doggone elite in baseball too. So I don't know. I'm just not a Tennessee person. Never been to Knoxville. Don't have as great of a feel on that one. But the point is, if you're Missouri, once again, you've proven you had one awesome season last year, a great turnaround season for the Tigers, a fun team to watch. And sure enough, Missouri fans came through the turnstiles in big numbers, the students, the alums, the locals, the whole thing. So if you're Missouri, to me, once again, basketball, you've got a tremendous opportunity now here. You've got the right coach. Let's just make sure we give him all the resources that are realistically necessary to make things happen, especially on the name, image, and likeness side. In terms of facilities, I think Missouri's in pretty good shape, but in terms of NIL, we just have to keep making sure that whatever it takes, and I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, but Missouri just has to be competitive there, especially in basketball, because that's the opportunity. The Tigers have a tremendous built-in fan base for basketball, much more so than maybe just a, a small handful of teams in the Southeastern Conference. So that is a big advantage for that particular program. On the other hand, on the baseball side, Well, there's just never been, relative to the rest of the Southeastern Conference, there's never really been any indication that Missouri fans, alums, locals, students are really that into baseball. So the question is, it's the old chicken or the egg thing, right? Are fans not coming because the program hasn't been that good or is it because the program's not that good because there's no real fan support? Well, it seems like Carrick Johnson the Nerm Missouri baseball coach, he's going to help us find that out. And let's talk about his hiring uh, coming up. But first, I do want to tell you about FanDuel Sportsbook. Yes, today's wonderful sponsor as I vamp here trying to pull up 
my my ad copy here excuse me very much but hey make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars that's right twenty five hundred dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win and if you were backing the Denver Nuggets yesterday well you certainly did not win but at this point it's time to stop ignoring the Miami Heat. I think we're going to just going to have to start taking the points and, well, hope for some covers at this point. But no matter what you think, there's no better place to bet on the finals action than America's number one sports book. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat. First bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And for you everydayers, you know you can find the podcast now on the SiriusXM app as well. And of course, you can listen to the Kansas City Royals against the Miami Marlins today and the Royal or excuse me, and the St. Louis Cardinals at the Texas Rangers today on the SiriusXM app or If you want to check it out on your radio dial, the Cardinals will be on channel 89 and the Royals will be on channel 176. So speaking of baseball, you know, some interesting decisions. If you're the Missouri Athletic Department right now, do you pour money into this baseball program or not? That's kind of what I was getting into. And that's what the whole talk around Missouri baseball has been lately. And from my perspective, I'm just glad I don't have to make this decision because I think it's a really, really tough call for Desiree Reed Francois. Because as I said, it's obvious that Missouri baseball, unless we start in some, unless something completely unprecedented and unpredictable happens in this program for the next few years or whatever, it's never going to pass Missouri basketball. It's just not. Missouri basketball. Norm Stewart, that is an established program with now generations of fans. My, my daughters are going to grow up to be Missouri basketball fans. I have other people who I've grown up with. Their kids have become Missouri fans. I was a little bit later in getting started. I can see that their, their kids or that are older than mine are already putting on the gear and all that good stuff. They're heading out to Missouri Arena last season and having a great time. So, Again, if you're Missouri, what do you do? You've got kind of a a, a below average, a a below par stadium, let's be honest. So until you build a new stadium, is anything really going to change here? Steve Beezer said that, hey, the support for baseball the last year or two, it's been 100% better. Well, apparently his results weren't good enough because Missouri decided to hire Carrick Jackson, a guy who, by the way, was on Missouri's staff at one point in time. So this gentleman knows what to expect when it comes to the Missouri baseball program. He's keenly aware of all the challenges that it's going to take. So I've got to believe that he has some assurances here that at the very least, hopefully Missouri will at least stop taking commercial flights that have multiple hops on the way home from a game that takes, you know, 12 hours to get home or something like that. That's just a, a severe competitive disadvantage that goes well beyond dollars and cents. That's just, Hey, your athletes are being punished physically and mentally essentially, because you aren't willing to invest at the ne- at the level necessary. And again, I can hear a lot of people right now. Missouri is essentially the 14th program in the sec right now. We're dead last in baseball without a lot of obvious ways to move up and get out of it but I would just say that the the initial reaction based on all of that based on everything that I've laid out here the reaction the negative reaction I've seen from a vocal portion of the Missouri fan base that is not happy with this hire well to me they sound a lot similar to the same people and probably often are the same people that thought that Dennis Gates was a bad hire too and again Here's the thing. If you're Missouri, if you're Missouri basketballs, I just laid out, obviously they're an established program, a much more desirable program compared to Missouri baseball. Well, if the Tigers had to go down to the mid-major ranks, essentially hire a guy who had never proved himself as a head coach at the high major level, well, 
if Dennis Gates, let's say if he had gone somewhere else at a high major place, like, I don't know, Iowa State or something, I, just to pick a, a random, you know, high major team that's next door to us in the Midwest. If he had went to Iowa State and made the NCAA tournament for two or three seasons in a row and was crushing it there, well, guess what? I don't know that Dennis Gates would have had any interest in coming to Missouri at that point. He would have held out for a much bigger job if he were indeed interested in moving on from Ames. So if you're baseball, well, that's even going to be more of the reality and truth of your situation. So like Desiree Reed Francois did with Dennis Gates, it seems like she's betting on Carrick Johnson as a person. And that's what you have to do. You have to believe in the guy. You have to believe in him as a coach, as a man, as everything. And of course, projecting forward, you think, hey, this guy can give us something that maybe we've never had before. Also, quite honestly, to point out something very obvious about Carrick Johnson, well, there's not a lot of black college baseball coaches. So does that help Missouri recruit? Does that help Missouri recruit black players specifically? I don't know. That's totally unclear at this point, but I will say this. In any way you possibly can, it's probably not a bad idea to be a little bit different if you're a Missouri baseball program, because if you're just going to be the same attempt to be the same as everybody else in the conference, that's never going to work because those people, those programs, the LSU programs, all those, all these big time college baseball programs that have been to college world series and even won college world series in the past few years, you're never going to be able to spend on that level and try to do exactly what they're doing. So why not try to be a little different? Whether it is trying to recruit a different type of athlete, maybe focus on the speed elements, or or go the opposite way and just try to hit home runs and have no speed. I don't know. Whatever it is, if you're Missouri, just try to push against the grain a little bit and, and be different because certainly trying to be the same as everybody is never going to work in this conference in terms of baseball or even football for that matter. And coming up last year on Mizzou's football team, I thought after Tyler Beatty was off the Missouri roster after 21, obviously the explosive element of the running game just wasn't there quite as much. But you know what? I do think there might be a solution currently on the Missouri roster. So let's talk about that right after these quick words. Well, I thought on last year's Mizzou football team that Cody Schrader was certainly a solid workhorse type running back for Missouri last season. He held on to the ball, I think, most importantly for Eli Drinkwitz, at least compared to Nathaniel, a.k.a. Nate Pete, whichever name you want to go with there for his first name. But Nathaniel Pete, though, I'm afraid he was definitely the more explosive player. And unfortunately, I think if he didn't have fumble problems at the beginning of the season, of course, famously fumbling, at the goal line against Auburn, that ended up costing Missouri the football game there. The Auburn Tigers re recover the ball in the end zone for a touchback. Missouri loses on that particular play, whereas if he just reaches out and scores or holds on the ball, maybe Missouri punches it in inside the one. That deal obviously could have been a much different outcome. And obviously it seemed like Pete was in the doghouse after that moment and some other fumbles in the season as well. But I tell you, in terms of actual running the football, in terms of production, you know, I think there's more upside for Pete that's still left on the table. And I hope the, the team gives him a real shot to redeem himself this year. Because if you look at a chart, a real simple chart that was put out by a Twitter account at Fball underscore insights on Twitter, well, on one axis, you have yards after contact per carry, right? And then the other one, you have missed tackles per touch on the other axis. So like any of these, if you're in the upper right-hand quadrant, well, that's a good thing. That means you're above average in both of those particular things. In other words, getting yards after contact and breaking tackles. Those are two good qualities to have if you're a running back. I think we can all agree on that. But my point is somebody who showed up in the upper quadrant of those running backs, we're talking power five running backs between 2014 
And last season, well, it was none other than Nathaniel P. Now, of course, a lot of that production came at Stanford University before he, the former Rockbridge product arrived back in Columbia last season. But it's just really interesting to note that Pete is in the same ballpark here as some real notable running backs. In fact, right in the same ballpark as Chris Rodriguez Jr., the Kentucky product who went to the NFL draft this year. And also some really big-time NFL names that you fantasy players are going to be extremely familiar with. Guys like Alvin Kamara Jr. and Dalvin Cook and even Joe Mixon. So some interesting names that Nathaniel Pete there has some really good company. And when you go into the left quadrant, the bottom left, when guys are below average in both, well, you've got some kind of no names in there for the most part, including, I hate to bring it up, but former Missouri running back Ish Witter, who had a lot of trouble getting things going, especially in that 2015 season when nobody really respected Missouri's passing attack. So a lot of context is obviously important here because another guy who's in that bottom left quadrant, well, current Kansas City Chief Isaiah Pacheco. So a guy who, as for my eyes last season, could sure miss a lot of tackles and get some yardage after the contact as well. So just thought that that was an interesting thing to note. Maybe your eyes can fool you, or maybe this is small sample. You know, everything needs context. All I'm saying is I do think for sure that those numbers do indicate what I think most of us saw is that there is more to Nate Pete here than maybe met the eye last season. I think he's going to have a nice bounce back season for Missouri this season. That's my prediction. And you know what? If you're into my predictions, thanks so much for listening to the end of this program here today for all you everydayers. Well, I don't know when the next one's going to be. I'm not going to lie to you. We're officially in off season mode here. It's June, not a lot happening, but Hey, when something like Connor Vanover coming to Missouri happens, I'm going to have a podcast for you. I'll promise you that. So until next time, I'm John Miller and thanks for listening to locked on Mizzou.